This season, Instacart has your back-to-school. As in, they've got your back-to-school lunch favorites, like snack packs and fresh fruit. And they've got your back-to-school supplies, like backpacks, binders, and pencils. And they've got your back when your kid casually tells you they have a huge school project due tomorrow. Let's face it, we were all that kid. So first call your parents to say I'm sorry, and then download the Instacart app to get delivery in as fast as 30 minutes all school year long. Get a $0 delivery fee for your first three orders while supplies last. Minimum $10 per order. Additional terms apply. Hello, and welcome to the Yale Monitor Brief. It's April 9th. I'm Kristen Tolman. Today's main story is an interview with All Monitor's chief correspondent, Amber Zaman, on Turkey's Tuesday morning decision to impose expert restrictions on trade with Israel. But first, let's get you caught up on the head. Lines. The kidnapping and subsequent killing of a local official of the Lebanese forces, one of the largest Christian political parties in Lebanon, over the weekend has caused outrage and sparked tensions in the country. On Tuesday, Lebanese security forces arrested seven Syrians on suspicion of involvement in the murder. Israel's military and political apparatuses remain convinced that Iran is planning a large attack to avenge the killing in Syria of its Quads Force Commander for Lebanon and Syria, Mohammad Reza Zahedi. In Syria, Iranian Foreign Minister Hossein Amir Abdullahian says Israel will be punished for the consulate strike. The Iranian Foreign Minister is on a regional tour visiting Oman and Syria. The Iranian minister accused the United States Monday of approving the strike. Hamas said Tuesday it was considering a new truce framework proposed during the latest talks in Cairo. And Israeli opposition leader Yair Lapid called Monday for a deal with Hamas to free hostages as he visited the United States. In Jordan, protesters have taken to Amman streets nightly in thousands during Ramadan, transforming the normally festive Muslim month into a solemn show of solidarity with Palestinians in war-battered Gaza. And Saudi Arabia hosted the Palestinian prime minister as Gaza ceasefire talks advance. Now, on to the main story. Hey, Amber, and welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Kristen. So listen, this morning, the announcement came that Turkey was going to place export restrictions with Israel. Can you tell us a little bit about what was the lead up to this announcement this morning uh, and how it's become sort of a touch point? Well, there's been a huge deal of criticism, Erdogan and his government, for failing to Acts trade relations with Israel as this war in Gaza rages on and as, you know, millions of Turks see all the horrors unfold uh, on their TV screens. Gaza is a hugely emotive issue and Palestine more broadly has always been uh, uh, something that Turks across the ideological divide care about. So to see this government that has positioned itself as the champion of the Palestinians, Erdogan in particular, to uh, fail to act, to take any sort of meaningful punitive measures against Israel, of course, um, caused a big deal of anger and voters made their feelings known at the polls in those local elections where we saw the ruling party uh, suffer huge and humiliating defeats across the country. So basically, to date, all the statements from Erdogan and the party in power, the AKP party, have been, you know, without any sort of, they've been bark, but no bite. And this is now the first bite that with the expert That's research. correct, because... Um, you know, there were these demonstrations uh, on Saturday in uh, Istanbul, in Taksim, and this was organized by a group uh, that advocates for Palestine. And we saw images of police violence, of these protesters being dragged on the streets, attacked by the police. And of course, this provoked huge outrage. I mean, you saw an explosion of anger across social media. And of course, the opposition was very uh, quick to seize on this. Notably, the small Islamist party that did so well in the local elections, almost tripling its vote at Erdogan's expense, uh, uh, campaigning on a very pro-Gaza platform, uh, criticizing those images and also the pro-secular party jumping on the bandwagon and look at making uh, Erdogan and the AKP almost look like they were Israel's allies. Um, and of course, this did not resonate only in Turkey, but across uh, the, the Muslim space, where in fact Erdogan has long been admired for his uh, very strong stance on uh, Palestine, on Gaza. But ultimately, when push came to shove, we saw, as I said, 
this government failing to take any real meaningful action. So I think on the one hand, they were kind of shamed into it. So you saw these uh, trade restrictions imposed on, I believe, 54 items, notably uh, steel bars, which is among the biggest export item to Israel. But I also think that um, beyond the sort of uh, shame part of this thing, it's also a matter of trying to nip these demonstrations in the bud at a time when the government is feeling particularly vulnerable in the wake of its um, local election defeat and not wanting these demonstrations to morph into possibly something bigger, uh, as we saw happen in 2013, when people sort of rallied around uh, the Taksim Square cause when the government was trying to do away with that green space. And then suddenly you saw people from across the political divide unite to protest against this. And then this became a huge nationwide thing. And of course, the government uh, engaged in uh, quite a bit of violence, suppressing it. Um, so I think they were trying to nip all of that in the bud, as I said. Well, yeah, and I guess it seems like they were quite quick to it if the protests were Saturday and then this Tuesday. I mean, as in putting in a response to some of the protest demands. I guess the last question I have is the Turkish economy has really high levels of inflation. Will these export restrictions hurt the economy any further or is there any sort of expert take on that thus far? Well, obviously it will hurt Turkey. Uh, I believe that... Um, the balance of trade is very much in Turkey's favor. They export somewhere between, I think, seven to eight billion worth of goods to Israel. And so, you know, every penny counts, as you said, in this uh, very dire economic situation. And Israel has vowed to retaliate, to also start banning imports from Turkey. So, yeah, I think that this is obviously going to uh, hurt Turkey. Um and also, you know, in normal times, Israeli tourists uh, come in large numbers to Turkey because it's uh, one of the few countries in the region where they actually feel comfortable. You know that Istanbul is a hub for Israeli tourists. And of course, Turkish Airlines also had announced, I believe, some measures that would restrict uh, flights uh, uh, going through Turkey to Israel. So, you know, the of course, it's going to have an impact. I wouldn't say it would be devastating. Uh, but still, I think this is um, a new sort of level of escalation, if you will, in Turkish-Israeli relations, because already Turkey withdrew its ambassador. And of course, the Israelis reciprocated in kind. There's been this war of words between Israel and Turkey with Erdogan, you know, likening Netanyahu to uh, Hitler and the like. Uh, and of course, defending Hamas uh, and saying that they're a legitimate legal group, etc., um, but apparently that rhetoric was certainly not enough to satisfy his own people. So here we are. Uh, and he, Turkey has had to act. Amber, and thank you so much. We trust that you'll be watching this. And if there's any updates, we'll make sure to have you come back. Well, that's kind of you. Thank you, Kristen. That's it for the All Monitor Brief. You can read more about all these stories and others impacting the region at allmonitor.com.